The orbital cavity is a four-sided pyramid with bony walls. It holds the visual apparatus in position and provides a certain degree of support and protection. The two orbits occupy a prominent area in the upper lateral part of the facial skeleton. Below and between them is the nasal cavity. The base of the pyramid is anterior and forms the anterior orbital opening. The apex is posterior and connects to the middle cranial fossa and the pterygopalatine fossa. A pair of eyelids, upper and lower, protects the eyeball. Periodic movements of the eyelids ensure that the tears are wiped across the cornea and sclera, and this keeps the surface moist. The lacrimal apparatus consists of the lacrimal gland, conjunctiva, lacrimal sac, and the nasolacrimal duct. The lacrimal gland secretes an aqueous solution, tears, rich in bactericidal enzymes. This solution also nourishes the surface of the cornea and supplies it with oxygen. The eyeball is a large globe-like apparatus suspended by muscles and fascia inside the orbital cavity. The structure of the eyeball is best appreciated in a transverse section. The sclera is the outermost layer. It is tough and fibrous and provides protection and shape to the eyeball. The intermediate layer is the vascular layer or the choroid. It contains blood vessels and pigments. The nasal cavity is the first portal of entry for air into the respiratory system. It is designed to warm up and also filter the incoming air to some extent. Together with the paranasal sinuses, it acts as a resonating chamber for the voice. Both sides are wrapped in a highly vascular respiratory mucous membrane, which is also called the mucoperiosteum. The cavity is placed just above the oral cavity and separated from it by the palate. Paranasal air sinuses are air-filled spaces in the vicinity of the nasal cavity. They are located within or between adjacent bones and communicate by small ostia with the nasal cavity to enable drainage of their secretions. By contributing empty space, they provide buffer for the impact of dramatic forces on the skull. Besides, they lighten the weight of the skull and give shape to the face. The external ear collects sound waves and presents it to the tympanic membrane. It consists of the pinna and the external acoustic meatus. Being located at a strategic location, it is also a highly ornamented organ, like the eye and the nose. Its upper surface provides a robust supporting platform for holding a spectacle as well as an external artificial ear in position. The tympanic cavity is also called the middle ear cavity. It is sandwiched between the external and the inner ear. It is located entirely within the petrous part of the temporal bone. It is a six-walled space communicating with the nasopharynx anteriorly. Posteriorly, it communicates with the mastoid air cells. The cavity is lined with respiratory mucous membrane. The tympanic membrane separates it laterally from the external acoustic meatus. The medial wall is common to it and the internal ear. The internal ear is entirely located in the petrous part of the temporal bone. It is related medially to the tympanic cavity. The middle and posterior cranial fossae are medial and above it. The internal ear is concerned with reception of sound and maintenance of balance. It is made of two parts, the vestibular balance and cochlear sound. The oral cavity is the region bounded by the lips and cheek at the sides, 
hard and soft palate at the roof, and the tongue at the floor. The alveolar sockets of the maxilla and the mandible raise a ridge and divide this cavity into a lateral vestibule and medial oral cavity proper. The pharynx is the region behind the oral cavity. The palatoglossal arch is the gateway, oropharyngeal isthmus, to the pharynx and is the line of demarcation between the oral cavity and the pharynx. A coronal section of the head presents a clear interrelationship between nasal, oral, and orbital cavities, as well as the paranasal sinuses. The triangular nasal cavity is a large area roughly in the middle of the face. It is divided into two smaller triangular spaces by a midline septum. The palate separates it from the oral cavity below. Bony plates in the lateral wall separate the nasal cavity from the orbit and the maxillary air sinus laterally. The orbits are supralateral to it, while the anterior cranial fossa is above both the nose and the orbits. The oral cavity is the space between the maxilla and the mandible.